everyone. My name is Mubha Vedavyas. I am from Andhra Pradesh, second year medical student in Dr. NTR University of Health Sciences. First of all, I would like to thank Asian Medical Student Association, 81 Foundation, and UNESCO New Delhi Cluster Office for a fair space at AMSA, India. Uh, the topic which I'd like to talk about is WASH in healthcare facilities. Uh, first of all, WASH uh, it's an acronym which stands for Water, Sanitation and Hygiene. WASH, healthcare facilities. How, how is that possible? Okay. Um, well, in 2008, the World Health Organization has published a report uh, by the name Essential Environment Healthcare uh, st health standards in healthcare settings. Um, according to this report, um, medical uh, healthcare workers, staff, patients, and neighbors in the healthcare facility, in and around the healthcare facilities, are at an increased risk of developing infections. In fact, these healthcare facilities are epicenters for uh, uh, epicenters when there is an outbreak of certain diseases like typhus or diarrhea. For example, a patient has been prescribed with an oral medication and uh, suppose he or she were to take that with uh, unsafe drinking water, then he or she would be developing a waterborne disease. Accordingly, uh, 700 million children under the age of 5 years die every year due to diarrheal diseases due to the lack of wash facilities. Now when I'm talking about wash facilities, what do you, what do you mean? Okay. What it means, what it encompasses is access to water, good quality and quantity, access to sanitation, access to hygiene, there must be good hand hygiene process, access to toilets, okay, and uh, access to sterilization of the various medical devices used in that particular facility. Then a very, very good infection prevention control procedures and protocols in that healthcare facility. Now, the way, for me personally, healthcare facility is a house of healing, okay? People, we and the people in the community, we all flock towards these houses of healing to get rid of ailments. And unknowingly, we are actually coming out of these facilities with another set of ailments. It's very ironic. Access to wash um, in healthcare facilities in India is appalling. Of the many healthcare facilities, the prenatal and the postnatal uh, facilities are at a, a the wash access is abysmal. Okay, um, many females are afraid of uh, early um, healthcare advice and they are very much afraid of institutional deliveries because they they are afraid of neonatal mortality. Maternal and neonatal mortality is a reality in India and the biggest cause is sepsis. Uh, this sepsis is coming in because of lack of wash. According to UNICEF, only 19.2% of health care uh, uh, of uh, labor rooms and 3.2% uh, of the post-neonatal care wards in India have access to wash. Amid the COVID-19 pandemic, the situation was intensified. Okay, so it's there. You agree? Now what? Well, the United Nations General Assembly has acknowledged that lack of wash infrastructure and services is a big problem and they aim to establish minimum uh, wash facilities by 2030 under the Sustainable Development Goal 6. Well, until and unless, until and unless, this ambitious goal of ours is a reality. Millions of people across the world are at an increased risk of developing infections. Then, what's going on? What's being done? The World Health Organization and UNICEF have come up with a number of uh, guidelines, number of ways for which we can achieve this. Um, and in our country, at the national level, in 2015, Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, along with the UNICEF, have developed a Kaya Kalab scheme. Now, what is this scheme? The government has set a standard of uh, 
health uh, standards and those healthcare facilities who are able to maintain that standards who are able to reach the standards now one of the biggest problems in our country is we are not just uh, we are not just having uh, we we have to provide these facilities we are not just providing these facilities we also have to provide uh, you have to keep on monitoring the facilities the efficacy over a longer period of time we can't just give, uh, give it to them and after few years it should not uh, become a business that is a big problem uh, in our country so this karikalap scheme and other government schemes are doing a way to monitor them at the same time develop them um, which is great then again in 2016 ministry of health and family welfare and ministry of jal shakti along with unicef have come up with another uh, mission sss mission swachh swasth sarvatra mission now according to this the idea is uh, see open defecation free odf blocks um, the healthcare facilities in these particular blocks uh, who are having less than 70% of the karikalap standards they are provided 10 lakh rupees so that these facilities can be ramped up and uh, um, met with at least 70% of the karikalap standards Uh, so far in 800 open defecation free areas the healthcare facilities were able to be uh, ramped up but that is a small thing we still have a long way to go guys and i'm pretty sure we can achieve it uh in order to achieve it the the international bodies have come up with four components for success first one is leadership policies number two it's strong monitoring missions number 3 uh, developing human resources and citizen led accountability number 4 technology the first one leadership and policies that is a government thing they are doing a good job technologies and number of technologies are coming up smart tap was something that came up in cambodia which did a fantastic job similar type of things are coming in our country that's a, that's also good number 2 and number 3 monitoring missions and um human resource development and accountability of citizens these two things healthcare community we the medical students of our country have a responsibility the healthcare community the doctors and the professionals they can get involved i, I believe they should involve in monitoring the wash facilities in various healthcare uh, setups and as medical students and young doctors uh, what we can do is we need to maintain highest standards of hygiene hand hygiene there's there are a lot of reports in the local newspapers uh, which pop up frequently that uh, medical students lack basic hand hygiene very very uh, uh i don't know i don't know how to say it very very uh, fill in the blank guys just fill in the blank um so we have see the biggest thing is we are residents in these facilities we are there in the facilities the government people the tech people who are developing the technologies they are away from this and they are doing a good job actually we are there in those particular facilities we are the residing there we are engaging there we are working there and we have we can make um the wash program the wash program a big success if we keep our heart and soul into this see first of all we need to connect share our experience and spread the word we need to expand this conversation get many people in human rights organization social welfare groups in it and speak up advocate get this discussion at a community level let people come aware about it let keep this always an active discussion prevent the spread of misinformation and train the patients um other staff healthcare professionals i mean amongst ourselves we can help out help each other to develop utmost level of hygiene and practices with all of this um going on and to our contribution we can do a lot man we can achieve it way before 2030 i hope we be able to achieve it at least by 2030 and 
that's all i have to say i just pray and wish that houses of healing shall remain as houses of healing thank you